You're watching Theme Park Worldwide where my trip here to Tenerife continues. Today I'm here at Loro Parque for my first ever visit. In English it actually translates to Parrot Park and it opened back in 1972. Now it's actually owned by the same company that owns Siam Park, the huge water park that I went to yesterday. And it's been about an hour and 20 minute drive round here. It's only about 45 miles from Siam Park, however the roads are very windy as you're making your way round. Obviously I've hired a car this trip check out the travel vlog to see that and also the accommodation where I'm staying. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing this place. The theming looks great and of course it's home to Tenerife's only roller coaster. That's right, there's only one coaster on the island. I definitely couldn't live here with just that. But you know what? I'm looking forward to experiencing it and showing you that ride here today. So come and join me as we experience all that this park has to offer. Well, I've parked on their official car park today, which is literally just out the front here. It's actually located underground, or at least part of it is as well. Yeah, just round to the left, and that's four euros to park all day. But you've got the land trains that are bringing people in here, I'd imagine from just the local area. And yeah, it's a very pretty entrance down here with a huge, impressive building with lots of details on. I'm looking forward to seeing the theming and landscaping throughout the park. Here we go then, so it only took about five minutes to get inside the park, very efficient entrance procedure. Anybody who's got a ticket online, round to the right, and anybody buying a ticket on the day, round to the left. I bought my ticket online, it's 40 euros for an adult, 28 euros for a child as of May 2022, the time of recording this. Now this park wins so many awards, in fact over the years it's won best zoo in the world, which is absolutely absolutely massive for this place and you know what I can see why looking at this all the trees and landscaping here beautiful and yeah the buildings and architecture of the entrance stunning it really is here's a look then at the park map and yeah as you can see it's a pretty big park can't wait to see the theming and landscaping throughout because the entrance here is gorgeous um, but yeah as you can see you've got the main pathway that runs through the water there or you can take a left that leads you down to the rest of the park and down here at the bottom, this shows you all of the animals that they've got here at the park. So much to see. Well, already I can see why this place is so highly regarded. I mean, you look at this with all of the amazing trees and landscaping throughout. It really is beautiful. And much like Siam Park, lots of shade as well. They do actually take a picture of you just over there when you come in. And yeah, look at all this grass area here, full of palm trees, very nice. Well, it's really busy coming in, everyone wanting to see the animals. Well, this is my main reason for coming, to ride this, Orca, the only roller coaster in the whole of Tenerife. It's only a small one, but it opened here in 2005, and it's a zero force. Let's go and check it out. Ho oh, ho, here it is with its bright purple track. Looks in quite good condition, actually. And you ready for the stats? See that lift hill right there? 13.1 foot tall. It's got a total layout of 229.7 feet. And then, yeah, it reached a top speed of 14.9 miles an hour. Ho oh, oh, ho, here we go. Let's go and have a ride. I'll take you along with the POV. Oh, here we go then. So I've got the train to the south and there's actually a turnstile and it's a one euro upcharge per person to ride this credit. It's not even included in our mission. Here we go through the trees. <laughs> Sitting in the front of the wilderness there. Whoa! <laughs> Whee! Oh, I got a little pop of air time. How many laps am I going to get for a euro? <laughs> Literally the only person on it. Woo! I hope it's at least four laps. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> a cred to cred. To be honest, it's quite a good little junior coaster. It's very smooth. Oh, we're going again. Let me show you the rest of the train. Backwards pub. Hey! You get very close to the trees on this thing. The only coaster on the whole island. <laughs> Got a nice theme station though. Is that it? Oh no, kicker wheels are still going. Oh, that's it. Three laps. Oh, that'll have to do. One euro. Well, you know what we say here at Theme Park Worldwide, a cred's a cred. And it's good to say that I've finally been on the only roller coaster on the whole island of Tenerife. 
one euro up charge and make sure you do bring some euros with you uh, because I couldn't see a card machine. He was accepting cash only from what I saw. Now, in terms of the ride, it was good fun. Nice little family coaster. Some impressive statistics that I shared before I went on. But yeah, three lap special. It's in a really nice condition, actually. Um, it doesn't look like it's as old as it is, 2005. Track color's really nice. Maybe it was repainted um, in the past few years because it looks in a really good condition. And same with the train on there as well. But uh, there you go. Nice coaster to get on here in Tenerife, the only one. And uh, let's head round and check out the rest of the park. Well, this place is much bigger than I was expecting. It took me quite a while, actually, to find the coaster. It's located here in an area known as Kinderlandia. And yeah, you can see the signage just over there for it. Um, yeah, it took me ages just to find it. So yeah, you want to kind of head down towards the bottom left of the park. And that's where you'll find this area that's got the ride. Even though it's called Kinderlandia, there's no other rides or anything like that. Literally, all they've got is the little coaster. I think it'd be quite nice to see them putting some more rides here, to be honest. You know, maybe another little junior coaster or even like a little drop tower or a carousel. Something like that would be great. But yeah, let's uh, continue on having a walk around. This part really is beautiful though. Uh, all in the shade as well, which is perfect on a very hot day and when the sun's out. I'm surprised actually, I got sunburned yesterday at Sion Park and if you haven't seen the vlog, make sure you check it out. But yeah, as you'll see, it wasn't really sunny all afternoon. Uh, it was quite cloudy. However, yeah, I still sunburned, even with sun cream on every couple of hours. So yeah, you've really got to watch out for that if you're coming to Tenerife. It's really giving me Disney's Animal Kingdom vibes. Of course, at Walt Disney World. And yeah, just walking around here, it's just reminding me of that a lot. I'm heading down into the aquarium now, so let's go and check out this inside here. So welcome to the inside of the aquarium. And yeah, it's not very busy at all around here. I think because everything's so spread out and it's actually a much bigger part than you expect, people are getting lost. Like there's loads of signage around telling you where to go. But yeah, instead of it being like big open wide paths, it's very kind of mysterious when you're walking around all the corners. And yeah, I think it's quite hard to find things. But yeah, it's very nice in here. Very spacious in the aquarium though. Loads of different exhibits to see all the way around. I love these big panorama tanks. Absolutely huge. Something about aquariums and fish in general that I just find really peaceful and relaxing. I could just watch them all day. Oh, this is so colourful. The camera doesn't really do it justice, this one, but wow. The colour of all the coral there and the nice lighting and the beautiful fish. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone's highlight of an aquarium is always an ocean tunnel where you can walk right through the tank and look up and see all of the magnificent creatures. Look at this guy just chilling out up here, <laughs> watching over the sharks and all the fish in here as well. Oh, here they come. What's really nice about this ocean tunnel as well is how wide it is. Sometimes you find these aren't wide enough and they get really busy and can kind of congested with people looking at all the animals. Whereas in this one, you can kind of stand at the side. People want to stay in here for ages and take photos and videos. You can do it. It's not really going to, you know, cause a backlog of people. Yeah, very nice in here with all the sharks. Da -da. <laughs> oh, a zebra shark. It's like the one at Alton Towers. Look at the size of these beautiful seahorses. Oh, they're lovely. And loads of clownfish in here as well. Hey, Nemo. So around the corner here, you've got this huge view back into the main ocean tank there as well. Gorgeous. Well, the aquarium was really nice and it was much bigger than what I was expecting, actually. The huge ocean tunnel was definitely the highlight. We've got the gorillas just here and also this picture when Michael Jackson visited back in September 1993. As you can hear in the background, there is a tour going on. That's something what they do offer here, like an upcharge experience, and they take you on lots of different tours, and also including behind the scenes as well. Now, I've heard from many people that this is the highlight of the park, and I've been looking forward to seeing this. It's Planet Penguin. Yeah, going up the little uh, travelator here. It's going to take us up and into Planet Penguins. Yeah, let's go and check out this. Well, it's absolutely huge in here. And here's some of their lovely little penguins over here. Oh, so cute. 
Look at this awesome theming and lighting just here. Yeah, the light's shining up through the squares at the bottom and onto all the hashtag rock work. Love it. So this is really unique to anything that I've seen before. We're actually moving round now on this little travelator that runs around the outside of where the penguins are. How cool is that? Hello. <laughs> Yeah, again, you can hear another tour in the background, this one in German. So yeah, they obviously offer the tours in loads of different languages, which is good if that's something that you like to do when you come here to the park. Now, of course, you don't have to go round on the Travelator. You can also just walk behind it here as well and come up on this aerial viewing area, looking over at all of the wonderful penguins here as well. Oh, these are nice just over here. We've got the Atlantic Puffin just here. Look at their bright orange beak. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Wow, look at the size of this fish tank. Really impressive. That's got to be what, 40, 50 foot tall? That is amazing. All the way down the middle of the walkway just here. God, I've never seen one quite like that before. How awesome is that? Literally hundreds and hundreds of fish in there. Then at the end of the penguin experience, you've also got an aquarium here as well. Well, Planet Penguin was awesome, a huge area for the penguins. And the fact you've also got that travelator all the way around was awesome. Like a moving walkway that you can just stand on and take it all in. If you wanted to, you can just keep going round as well. I know so many people love seeing penguins. I do too. And yeah, that was a really nice space for them in there. Beautiful that was. Here you've got the chimpanzees. And a bit of a stroll around just there. Hello. Oh, it's having to chill out. Oh, aren't they lovely? Oh, he's gone. <laughs> oh. Now, much like Siam Park, there's loads of eateries here. You've got the pizza and pasta restaurants over here, which is lovely, all under the trees. And yeah, I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing here at the park so far, and just the landscaping of it all, and the theming, and very nicely maintained and looked after. Uh, I said that yesterday at Siam Park, but obviously all owned by the same company. Uh, this was their first park, they owned in the 70s, and yeah, you really can tell that they put a lot of care and attention into all their parks. Buildings around here are very nice. And yeah, just the general architecture of the place is lovely with that big Thai entrance and yeah, all the nice foot bridges around here and like a little marketplace with some shops around here. So much to see, it's a much bigger park than I was expecting. Oh, look at this. How nice is this? Loads of fresh food available here. Yeah, this is nice, all the balloons at the top. Yeah, sweet sharp and just loads of little shops and like a bit of a marketplace here. Oh, how nice is this round here? The elephant. Got the big palace just over here as well. I think that might be the bird show just round here. So much merch here. It was the same at Siam Park, but yeah, loads of merch. And yeah, look at this. Yeah, the Loro show just round this way. There's some beautiful architecture at this park, such as the building that you can see there behind me. Now in terms of shows, there's four different ones on offer here at the park. I'll be honest, animal shows aren't really my sort of thing, so I'm not going to be watching them today. However, you have got the parrot show here just behind me. Along with that, you've got the sea lion show, the dolphins, and also the orcas as well. So yeah, you've got lots of different shows on offer, all included in the admission price. And yeah, shows are around 20 minutes in length, and from reading on the map, it does state that you want to be getting there at least 15 minutes before to get entry to the shows as they do get busy. Along with that as well, um, they also are presented in English as well as Spanish. So yeah, if you are going to see the shows here at Loro Parque, uh, there's a bit of information for you about them. Let's continue on walking around and discovering the park and seeing more of the wonderful animals. So just over here you've got the jaguars. 
And you see him there behind the bushes, peeking out. <laughs> Aww. He's cute, isn't he? Look at the roots on this tree. Wow. That's amazing. At first I thought it was fake, like all theming, but no, that's the actual roots of the tree. God, that's amazing. Pull them to cover around here in these beautiful conservatories now. How nice is this? All the lovely planting. I feel like I'm down in my local garden centre, back at B&Q. <laughs> Here's some of the lovely birds that they've got here at the park. And yeah, the colour of these, oh, beautiful. Look at those. Like yellow, green, red, orange. Really colourful birds. Yeah, this place is huge. It's so much bigger than what I was expecting. And on a map as well, it doesn't look massive. But then when you come and walk around, there really is so much to see. Oh, and then you get hit by plants. <laughs> yeah, loads of seating areas, plenty of food options as well, which is fantastic. Oh, we've got a big open area around here to the right. I think I can see some flamingos. Now, as with all zoos around the world, there's lots of different information boards telling you lots of different facts about the animals that you are seeing. And yeah, again, it's also available in English and also German as well, just there as well. So yeah, if you are coming here as an international visitor, they've got you covered, which is really good. It's a lovely area for the flamingos. This reminds me of Bush Gardens Tampa Bay around here and their flamingo area, obviously over in Florida. Love flamingos. Beautiful birds, aren't they? Oh and yeah, this is really pretty around here. Love the huge palm trees, they're so nice. We've got a few in our garden at home, but yeah, not this big. <laughs> I don't think we'll be able to grow ones like this back in the UK. Oh, hello there. We've got the lovely little meerkats down here now. You're posing for us all on theme park worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they're nice. Oh, I like that one down the back there. He's cute. <laughs> but yeah, the landscape in here is absolutely amazing. It really is. And yeah, the size of the exhibits as well. Brilliant to see. Down to Lion's Kingdom now. Let's see if we can spot any lions around here. Yeah, this is huge. All the planting really makes it. Here they are having a bit of an afternoon nap. Oh, oh, maybe not. And they're listening to me. <laughs> oh, this one on the right just nicely chilled out over there. Hello. <laughs> they got so many birds here. I guess it is the parrot park after all. Yeah, literally, there's more birds here than I think I've ever seen in my entire life. They're absolutely everywhere, just on pathways and the different areas walking around the park. Oh, we've got a nice waterfall down here as well. I'm in heaven right now. I love a good cactus plant. And look at these. Something about them that I've always loved since I was a kid. Look at this one just here. <laughs> well, yeah, love a good cactus. There's plenty of them here at this park. Amazing. Now, of course, I visit theme parks on most days of the week, so I'm quite used to directions. But this place, I'm so confused walking around. Like, all the little pathways. I'm normally really good at kind of, when I've walked past something, knowing where I'm going. But here, everything's just a bit of a mystery because you've got all these little pathways and it's covered in trees. Yeah, it's quite a tough one to actually get round. Like, if you ask me now how I get back to that junior coaster, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'm glad there's a lot of signage around and, of course, park maps everywhere as well to help guess. Uh, because, yeah, really, it's quite confusing to get around this place. Looks like we've got another aquarium just over here at the back of the park. I'm down towards the junior coaster again now, just meandering around and yeah, I managed to find it again. Here we go, let's have a little walk through here. Oh, so this has got loads of jellyfish inside here. Look at this. Oh, I love jellyfish. We like watching them just shimmy along. <laughs> Oh, these are beautiful. Look at the size of these as well. And the colour of them, wow. They're probably the nicest jellyfish I've ever seen. They are beautiful. More fish over here as well. So much marine life at this park. Loads of aquariums, inside and outside.
back over the one euro coaster now it's got some more customers <laughs> there you get a great view up here so if you are coming and you send your kids on there you can come around the corner up onto this little balcony you get some great views of the orca roller coaster running around the tracks <laughs> but yeah nice little ride Got some lovely little otters just over here. <laughs> and not, oh, in the plane, just running around between all the logs just there. <laughs> oh. Look at the size of these tortoises just here. Absolutely huge. I don't think I've ever seen any that big before. Look at the one on the left. He's absolutely massive. <laughs> So this is Tiger Island, an absolutely amazing tiger exhibit. And yeah, look at the size of it. All the shaded area for the animals as well. The rocks, the waterfall. Yeah, this is really nice and it's huge as well. Around to the right, you can just see one of the white tigers. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. Just down there in the trees, hiding away from the sun in the shade. Yeah, you can just see him off to the right there. So my visit here to Laurel Park A is coming to an end. However, I've still got a few more animals to see. So we're gonna start making our way back down towards the beautifully Thai themed entrance to the park. And yeah, I loved all them buildings when I first came in. Uh, that's the thing, they've got a lot of Thai connections it seems with the entrance here and obviously the whole of Siam Park following that Thailand theme. But yeah, I love all the buildings, very nice. What I really like around the park is how they've got these dedication plaques on each of the different areas and exhibits telling you when they opened and who they were opened by. So yeah, I'm now in the Katandra treetops and this area opened in 2009. Now I've got to walk through all these. I think the birds are going to be flying around everywhere in here. We're actually in with them, hence why we've got all these different chains hanging down just to make sure they don't escape. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is nice. It reminds me a little bit of an adventure land at the Disney parks, the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Yeah, that's what it reminds me of quite a bit. Hello. Oh. You get really nice and close to them here. Oh, he's going up the tree. Hey, I'll walk underneath you. Just don't poo on me, please. Hello. Oh, look at this beauty just down here. Oh, gorgeous. Hello. I don't know if they speak to you, these or not. Hello. The ones at Drayton Manor in their zoo back in the UK. They always say hello to me, I think, because I go all the time. They recognise me. <laughs> or maybe they just do that to everyone. Yeah, we're going to walk around this way now and up these steps. Up into the trees. This is very nice. I would say this is actually my favourite part of the park. And yeah, I nearly missed it, to be honest. I had to take a right. I was heading down to the entrance. And then, yeah, took a, a right turn. There's so much here to see, so you've got to make sure you really study the map and also just explore around so you don't miss everything. Yeah, because this is very nice. Obviously, you can see these big supports. There's not a massive roller coaster above here, unfortunately. Uh, but what there is, is a massive net, obviously, over the roof just to stop the birds from escaping. Oh, you can hear them, though. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Oh, I like these little poses, aren't they? Hello. What are you enjoying there? You got some nice oranges. Hello, you got any for me? Can I have some? No? Oh, okay, that's a no. I think he said I'm going to poo on you if you keep hassling me. So, okay, I'll just carry on walking. Oh, we've got this nice suspension bridge over here. It's like, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. <laughs> there you go, nice big bridge going across. This is lovely. Best area of the park, this and the main entrance. That's my main reason for coming here, getting the coaster, but also just seeing the theming and landscaping here. So it's very pretty. And yeah, you might have noticed some people wearing these little stickers. That means that they're on a tour as they're going round. So yeah, like I say, you can do all sorts of different tours that they offer here. But yeah, one of them I think is only about 11 euros. So yeah, if that's something that you're into and you really like seeing the animals and want to go a bit behind the scenes and find out more information, then yeah, obviously check out their official website here at Laurel Park eh? and yeah, I'll give you lots more info about that. But yeah, that was lovely up there. Very immersive around here.
I think the fact that I walked through out there without getting pooed on is a miracle to be honest because there were so many birds in there. And yeah, this area shows you all their feed. As you can see, it's all laid out there. You know, it's like the kitchen for all the birds preparing the food. And then, of course, they can send it around the park. What a lovely place to walk around. All in the trees, lots of shade as well. I mean, again, the sun has gone in, but it's still really warm. And yeah, yesterday I got right sunburnt around the back of my arms just here. See, you've really got to be careful if you're coming over here, even if the sun isn't directly shining. We've got some crocodiles over here to see before making my way back to the entrance and, of course, wrapping up the vlog. Look. These are actually American alligators. You can just see them over at the back there, chilling out. Scary. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in there with them. Yeah, it gives you lots of information, of course, about them just up there as well. Got the animal embassy just around here as well. So yeah, I'm gonna have a little walk through here. I don't really know exactly what's inside. But yeah, we'll go and have a little stroll through. There's so much to see here. You get a lot included in the ticket price. Here's a map then of the animal embassy here at Loro Park, eh? And yeah, as you can see, you've got the clinic down here and also the labs as well. So yeah, where they look after all the animals, do any research, and yeah, it's great how they've got all this on display so that we can see it. All about the conservation and everything that they do here. And like I say, you've got the signage in a variety of different languages all around, which is great for international visitors such as myself. I really like how they've got this all on display. It reminds me a little bit, again, of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And they've got the labs and the hospital kind of on display so people can see it and realize just how much work um, goes into uh, looking after these wonderful animals. And of course, yeah, everything that goes on behind the scenes at somewhere like this. Brilliant to see, it really is. I think he's moving quite quick for a tortoise, to be honest. Look at it, you go for it, pal. He's moving really fast. <laughs> but as you can see, this is just down by the entrance to the park now. It's kind of built around to the left hand side. So yeah, obviously to get in and out, we head around this way and back to the Thai village that is gorgeous, isn't it? I love the theming of the entrance and lots of the other buildings throughout the park too. Back down here now then in the beautiful Thai village. And yeah, just have a little look inside the gift shop over here. You'll also be glad to know that they sell the one euro caps here. My mum and dad were really pleased with that from Scion Park yesterday. Uh, yeah, they sell them here for just one euros as well. I guess it's the best publicity for them, isn't it really? So it's mainly full of plushies in here. And yeah, of course, you've also got lots of different t-shirts with all the animals on as well. Pretty much generic stuff, but obviously there is some bits that have got um, Laura Parquet actually on there as well with the branding. But yeah. Nice little gift shop. Back outside of the shop then now, and once again, the Thai themed buildings here really are wonderful. Yeah, the entrance to this place is great, it really is. All the little balconies and walkways, looking out over the fish. And you've also got this big bell just over here as well, and it says, have you done any good deed today? If so, you can strike this bell, sending its music out to the world. Well, you know what, I'm gonna strike it because we've got a plus one, coast of credit, here we go. It's gonna be loud, this one, viewers. Is that it? That was really underwhelming. And much like down at Sion Park, they also do the second visit for 13 euros and also special prices on tickets. In fact, you can go to Sion Park, the Water Kingdom, for 30 euros just by uh, buying your ticket here. And of course, showing that you've uh, visited the other attraction. And yeah, they also do the combi tickets as well. That's certainly worth looking at if you are wanting to do both the parks that I've done over the past couple of days. Now I said back at the start of the vlog how this place has won loads of awards over the years. Well here we go, they've even got their own Hall of Fame inside the park. And look at all the trophies and certificates all the way around here. Oh, I love that, like what a great way of kind of showing off if you like, but I don't blame them. Like, you know, it's something to be really proud of, especially like the TripAdvisor awards they've got down there and yeah, everything else. Yeah, absolutely brilliant how that's on display in the park, why not? Well, that brings me to the end of my first ever visit here to Laurel Parquet in Tenerife. I've been here just over four hours and seen everything that I wanted to from this park. Some beautiful theming, the buildings here at the entrance and around the park are wonderful. And just the fact that you're walking around what feels like a jungle, all under the trees, there's so many shaded areas, which is really nice when the sun is shining down as well. But yeah, the park is wonderful, it really is. There's actually a lot more to see here than I thought there would be. Uh, of course, the animals 
animal experiences are fantastic here and the size of the exhibits really is wonderful. I think my favourite was definitely the penguins. I thought that was a very nice area and the fact that you've got the moving walkway in there as well uh, was fantastic and a great way to see the penguins. Uh, but yeah, this park is much bigger than I was expecting. It's a little bit confusing to get around but in a way that adds to the charm of it. All the little pathways in the trees, uh, climbing down over bridges and rocks. I really like that. It's just a little bit different. Of course, it is all fully accessible. However, instead of just walking around and seeing big pathways, it adds to this park. It's got quite a calm, peaceful and tranquil vibe throughout, um, which is very nice and something that you don't normally get uh, in a zoo. Um, I just think this is really nice, walking around all the trees. I mean, look at it here at the entrance with the waterfalls. And yes, the entrance area is beautiful. But that continues as you make your way around the rest of Loro Parque. Of course, you have got the coaster credit here as well. There's no other rides, but there is the one coaster. To be honest, I think it would be really worthwhile and then putting in some more rides here, like a relaxing boat ride around the waters would be fantastic. Imagine that kind of loading in the corner and taking you around. I know not everything's got to be about rides, but I do feel like here, um, you know, they should go down the route of putting in some more themed attractions to complement the absolutely awesome theming. You can tell they're both owned by the same company, of course, with um, Siam Park, and they also own an aquarium and a few other attractions as well. Um, but yeah, you can tell they do things to a certain standard. The buildings, the operations, and most importantly, how it's looked after and maintained. Um, sometimes you walk around these parks and you can just tell they're really old and dated. Here, it looks like the whole park was built like five years ago. Everything's really nice and clean, very fresh, and I definitely recommend a visit. Of course, if you do enjoy the animal shows, you've got the four on offer here as well. If you did want to come and see all of those. Uh, but there we go. Thank you very much for joining me here in my second vlog from Tenerife. Uh, yesterday's video from Siam Park. Make sure you check it out. Me, mum and dad, and we went on loads of different rides. And also the travel vlog just before that as well, showing you the flight out here and also my accommodation. There's one more vlog from this trip to Tenerife coming up on Theme Park Worldwide, and that's going to be a visit to Jungle Park tomorrow. This is an addition to the trip because I was doing some research and I actually found out they've got like a little bobsleigh there. So I thought, let's definitely go and get that and see another park. It looks like there's some great theming and again, set in wonderful surroundings, much like here at Loro Parque as well. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And that leaves me with one final thing to say. Get out there and keep on riding. See you all in tomorrow's video.